Would you have sex with a robot? Um, I mean, there's going to have to be some determining factors in the, the way that I answer that question. Um, am I with somebody? You're by yourself. You just have opportunity to have sex with a robot that has all of the requirements and the things that you would need, but you know that it's a robot. I don't even want to ask this question, but I'm going to. Uh, are they going to talk to me at all? Only if you want them to. It's a robot. You can program it to do whatever you want. Am I a lonely old man or am I a thriving 20-year-old? I don't really think that your age matters necessarily. I don't think it matters how much you're getting. There's still a possibility that you might hook up with a sex robot. I'm going to say that you are in the current situation that you are in now. You are a married man in your mid-30s. My heart wants to say yes, uh, but I will say I'll, I will say no if that's the case. Now, if I'm not married, if I'm single, um, or even recently divorced or something, sure, then I then I would <laughs> I would probably say I'll give it a whirl. But I don't think don't think it would be enjoyable. I just I can't see a robot being enjoyable. I don't know if I would do it or if I wouldn't do it. I really don't know what I would do. I think that I I think that I would at least I don't know. Because to me it's like, look, man, sometimes you'll see like anime or sometimes you'll see some pictures of like cartoons and be like, oh, that's yeah, well, hey, that's cool. But I'm not gonna do it to that. Like there has to be an aspect of humanity in it for me. Uh I mean I don't really necessarily care about the the human part, like the humanity part of it. Um but it probably, like, it would have to be literally a woman or, you know, for me, it would have to be a woman. Like, 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 the, like I would have to know it's a woman. Like, there would be no robot showing or anything. You know what I mean? Like, as soon as I started oh, thinking you... that it was a robot or, like, if I saw, like, a piece of metal exp- exposed somewhere, uh, then I'd be like, oh, shit, what am I doing with my life? I could, man, you'd have to completely buy into it. And I'd probably have to be inebriated or extremely high, um, knowing that like this is <laughs> this is where I've gotten to. And listen, if any of you out there have sex with robots or whatever, you know, good for you. But uh, I don't think I could do it. If this becomes completely like popular, though, like completely accepted, do you think they could, could take over society? Like, would young John be like, well, why would I need to get in a real relationship when I can just have this robot? So that's how the human race uh, gets eliminated, isn't it? Is people just stop having sex with each other and they start having sex with robots because robots can basically do what you need them to do and then they don't want to stick around, right? You can throw them in the, in the closet, so to speak. You know, they, you don't have to cook them dinner. You don't have to worry about paying for anything. It's essentially like a lady of the night. It's essentially a sex worker that you don't really have to do anything besides put some oil in it. Oh, uh, that would, uh, <laughs> what would those even run on sex robots? Like for real, like <laughs> battery power, like... man. That's really what the thing is that I'm slightly surprised of is that the very first kind of robot we didn't design was a sex robot. If you were trying to make business out of robotics and you wanted to make money as a robot person, you would think the very first thing that you like, we can design this. Like, no, man, make a sex robot. Everybody's going to do that. That's the best money maker. They have some kind of robots. I wouldn't call them robots, right? They're toys, right? Like the, the fleshlight, and I believe it's there's even a, like a there's a bottom half of a woman that you can buy. Probably men too at this point. Um, but for can a, you buy fleshlights of men's buttholes? Can you get <laughs> right? Like, because you can get a fleshlight of like a popular porn star's genitalia. Can you get like a fleshlight of like a popular man's butt? That's a gr- you get Brad Pitt's butt. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a great question, like or, or a great thought. Could you imagine having your, you know, penis just molded and sold a hundred thousand of them to random women to have you know pleasure themselves with? Like, like, like what? We had a sex toy designer on here a long time ago. He said that apparently that like women want really much smaller things than men think that they do like they don't want the big old honker they want old little john you think they have like a micro penis one? Oh, i don't know 
I mean, there's got to be. Look, man. <laughs> it doesn't just like there is a around. shape for every size, right? <laughs> like a little, like a little one incher. Just like no, I want the micro pe Maybe I'm sure. Why not, man? Whatever you get down with, that's how you get down. You like <laughs> I mean, the, you like the half incher? Go for it. Maybe that's I'm what not, somebody wants. Not hating on it. I just don't know how it's pleasurable. Uh, anyways, getting back on. Topic. How would you feel if you were the model? If you were the model for the micro penis, how would you feel if they were like John? We need to make a micro penis model, and we heard that you're the guy. Like, would you be proud? Would you be like, who's the model for this best-selling micro penis? Like it's John Schull. I think I, I think what would be worse is like they have auditions, right, to be molded, but you don't know like what size you're for, and you get a call. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're all excited. And they go, well, actually, uh, we're really excited. But the mold that we're going to fit you for, uh, you classify, you're, you'll be the micro penis. <laughs> you're like, oh, we were looking for a deformed one. And like, you're the model for that because yours like hooks 90 degrees to the right. <laughs> if you, I don't. That would be incredible. Like you show up and like, yeah, yeah, we, we, you were selected. Most I, disappointing I, penis. Like, ah. Oh. I, I mean, I don't really want to know, but I am kind of interested uh, now as we discuss this strange topic. Like, how many people actually use, like, the the fake vaginas or the, you know, the fake penises? Like, but but not, like, just the toys. I mean, like, the the ones that are, are supposed to emulate actual body parts um, in terms of, like, there might be some hips with it or, you know, maybe some legs. Oh, that's not a huge number. The online revenue of Fleshlight.com amounted to seventy-two point three million in twenty twenty-two. So that's not I mean, that's not crazy, right? Like that's not who a okay. huge amount. Another website says four million have been sold. That's from two thousand eleven. So that's pretty old. And then in two thousand seventeen, they said they sold four hundred thousand a year. That's a lot of flashlights, man. Yeah, like, but like if you take that across the population of the world, right? Like selling 400,000 in a world population of 8 billion, that's not a lot. So it's like I would say that that's not common but not uncommon. Like they're not selling a lot, but they still sell a lot. <laughs> I want to know if anyone out there that listens to this and you're a I don't know what, a construction worker, cop, firefighter, have you ever been in a situation where you're you're going to do something and you just come across a random flashlight? Like, oh, we got to go arrest this guy. And you just walk in and there's just like six flashlights all laying around. Like- Man. <laughs> I don't think I know somebody that has one that has I know two people that have one actually now that I think about it. I don't think that you can you cannot own more than two of those. You can do whatever you want. However you get down is however you get down. But you cannot own more than two of them. You can't. I mean, listen, right? I'm laughing. I'm laughing um, because it is kind of an uncomfortable, comfortable topic to talk about. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. Want, I mean, if that's how you get down, great. But with what you just said, I, I would like to know: are, are the dishwasher safe? Like, how do you clean them? And you have to wash them out. You got to wash them out. Right? <laughs> like, like, you just rinse them in the sink where you that. brush your teeth and shit, like. Anyway, that would be so strange for a child to find. Like, what's this? You got to hide that sucker, right? Like, you got to have a gun safe, and then you got to have another safe. Like, that needs to be hidden away. Anyway, all right. I feel uh, like we should, we should, we should go. Yeah, we should. Anyways, yes. Ultimately, I would uh, have sex with a robot if it came down to it. How about you? I think that I probably would, but it would. It would take it would take a while. I'm not going to be the first in line. Can you okay. imagine, like in in 20 years, like the big Christmas presents for adults are like, you know, Generation Six of you know Layla, and there's just a line outside of a, like a store. Where are you getting it? Like right now, you got to have that shipped to your house, and everybody damn well knows what it is, <laughs> right? Imagine the UPS know. person is just like, ah, oh, man, this guy bought another one. <laughs> right, they know what it is. This is a great. This is a great debate, I think, and we don't have to have it. But I'm going to say what I what I feel is that yes, the lead singer is technically 
they get the the most limelight, right? They get the attention. But when you get down to actual music, creating it, doing it, I feel like the lead guitarist is the real leader of the band. And I say that I'm probably completely wrong, but I could probably point out five or six examples to back my point. I think whoever is in charge of kind of the beat, whoever is making the beat behind the lyrics, that's probably the most important person. Because you can kind of get, the lyrics don't matter that much. I mean, sometimes they do. They can set the tone for the song. They can match the song. But I think that whoever's kind of putting the beat together is the most important person. I mean, it's hard to argue that. Uh, How about we just end it like this? We'll say every band member is important, except for the bassist. No, you can, a bassist can be anybody. Yeah. Or the person, like, hitting the triangle. (laughs) Like, what's your job? I'm just the cowbell guy. Like, you're not... We don't need you that much. I always wonder that, like, when you go see live music and there's, like, the guy that, you know, has the keyboard where he just hits the same key for one song and then he stands up three songs later and hits the triangle. Like, does he actually get paid a good amount? Like, does he travel? That's a good question, right? Like, if you had the guitarist, the lead singer, the drummer, and then the person who just plays the triangle... Are you splitting the profits 25, 25, 25, 25? Or are you going to be like, no, man, you're only getting like 10. Like, yeah. you're not getting 25% for playing in two songs. I think the, that's how bands break up. That's how bands well, break up. I actually think this is a great question to ask you. So, might as well include this one. So, uh, here we go. Uh, is being in a band a, a, a difficult? That's the first part of the question. Secondly, is it harder to keep it sustainable for more than a decade? Because most bands uh, during their first runs do not stay together that long. I don't know. I mean, I've never been in a band is the short answer to your question. Like, I've never been in a band, so I don't really know. But I th- I, the only thing that I could say to that is, like, I have this theory that essentially any band, no matter how good they are, really only has, like one and a half albums you've got the one that introduces you and that might be your best or it might be lead up to the next album that is really good i think that they only have like one and a half good albums and then it's kind of like maybe you'll get a song out of that album (laughs) but name me like the musical the band that's like man that whole they've got three good albums uh, I mean, but see, it's going to be up for such debate, though. That's a thing because music is, you know, you like music or you don't like music. So, like, I could say, like, okay, I'll say one band to your point Hootie and the Blowfish, right? I think they only That's really who had. who you're going to fucking choose is Hootie and the Blowfish? Well, 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 for one band that had, like, one record. And then, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, they had one massive record and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean,. I think it's easier to, yeah, to your point, I think it's easier to name bands like that than bands that had, you know, like you could say Queen. I think Queen had multiple albums that had, that were successful. Um, I mean, the Eagles, even though I think the Eagles only had like five or six albums that they actually released. Um, I mean, I'd have to look at like Zeppelin, but I know they had multiple albums and I don't know how commercially successful they were. You know, it's... Yeah, I think there's far fewer of that than, like, one and duns, but people remember the one and duns. And then it seems like bands, we'll use Hootie as, a, as an example, do it, tour, 10 years later, they all break up, and then they come back together in their 40s, 50s, and 60s and make even more money because people go see them for two years straight. You know what I mean? Well, you get on top, right? Like, you get on top, you think that you got the world, you think that you can do whatever, then you realize that you can't, that you need other people, then you come back together later in life. It's, it's better to be on top than on the bottom. hey Unless you're a sex robot. What if sex robots become so realistic that they can do that? Like, top, uh, you know, doggy, different Oh, positions. I don't think that we're far away from that. I don't think that we're that far away from it. I mean, in, like, a historical time period. It's not going to happen, like, next week. But I think in the next 20 years, like, we're going to be there. I can just, or I can it's just going to be virtual. I can just see the people that are listening to this that may be interested in these just, you know, immediately Googling right now sex robot companies. Yeah, man, I would invest in that. That's a good investment. <laughs> Pour all my money into sex robot companies because that's coming and that's going to be popular. Uh, all right, let's, 
another th- a theoretical question for you. Are you the kind of person you go to the gym, correct? <laughs> Can't you tell? I well, I only see you from like the neck up most days, but yeah, you're looking swole. Your hairline's great still. Um, hairline looks good. That's all that matters. Yeah, mine grows like a fucking chia pets. Anyways, uh, people that go to the gym midnight to four a.m. What what are you thinking there? Because I happen to be at the gym, which I just started re-going. Clap to myself and claps to all you people out there that are doing the same thing, trying to make yourself better physically. Um, But I happen to go late. And I got to tell you, the clientele after midnight, (laughs) it's a little weird. I mean, it's not what I thought uh, at all. A a lot of of hooded sweatshirts. Pretty sure somebody was sleeping on the calf raise machine. Like, it it was different. I don't really want to be at a gym between midnight and 3 a.m., right? If that's your thing, that's your thing. But if you're going to any kind of business that is not a bar or a restaurant between the hours of 12 and 3, you're going to see some interesting people that are there. I don't understand how anybody works out any other time than first than the first thing in the morning. I really don't understand how people do that. Like, I would never have the motivation to work and then go to the gym. I could never do that. I got to do it first thing in the morning, get it over with. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah. Well, and then if you have a family, if you have other responsibilities, I mean, it's practically impossible. Uh, or if you have a job, I guess, maybe if your job's like five to one or four to noon or something, like that would be the sweet spot. Get out of work, go to the gym at like 1, 1 p.m. That would be the the sweet spot, but most of us don't have those uh, those hours. Um, yeah, anyways, that, that, that kind of shocked me because like, Hadn't been in the gym in quite a while, and uh, I was just like, oh, oh boy. Uh, the gym is a place where you can see some interesting people doing some interesting things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got to say one more thing, and I'm going to sound really pompous here, and I'm sorry. You've been that. to the gym four days, and right now you're judging people? I used to go a lot, so I'm, I'm going to play on that. Times have changed. But... If you weigh, let's say, over 300, 400 pounds, and all you're doing is calf raises, not sure that's the most, uh, you know, workout that you should be doing. But no one says anything, and I just don't get it. You know, but I guess they're there, right? That's the important part, as my wife scolded me about. They're there. Yeah, dude, they're there. So They're doing something that's better than nothing. I mean, maybe it's not the best use of their time. Maybe they could be doing something else, but it's better than nothing. Do something. Yeah, well, get some big ass calves, man. Yeah, Start with like, maybe they're just starting with the low body, working all the way up. They're gonna get huge calves, and then they're gonna do the rest. Anyway. I would never give anyone advice at the gym. I would never give anyone advice unless I saw like somebody doing something that was like, "Man, you're gonna hurt yourself." But no, I wouldn't even do that then. Yeah, I don't I- think that I would see anybody. If somebody was doing the bench press with 225 pounds, lifting it up and then dropping it on their chest, just straight dropping it on themselves, I don't think I would be like, I don't think that's how you do that. I still wouldn't yeah. say anything. Be like, well, maybe you're doing something I don't know about. Maybe um, you're training I mean, for something else, getting punched in the chest. If that was happening, yes, I would go over and help. Um, or if someone looked like they were, you know, struggling or about to drop, you know, a barbell or weights or something. Well, yeah, if they were in danger, sure. but if they were doing that on purpose, I don't. But, you know, I the the one of the greatest inventions of the last fifty years, the the AirPod, now allows me to basically just block out all noise and listen to loud music, and I don't have to worry about anything else. It's the best. I don't. I think I might be. I'm I'm going to say this. I might be the only person that I know or have ever seen that works out regularly and does not listen to music. I mean, I don't I, bring anything to do. I don't listen to anything. And if I'm, I'm on like an elliptical machine, I don't watch TV. That that is like you have no you, you have no other stimulus other than doing the like, if you're on the elliptical, like, that's probably the most boring. Act. It's great, by the way. Listen, I'm not saying if you're doing it, fantastic for you. But that's boring. Like, how, how do you stay motivated? I completely zone out. Completely you're and just, totally zone out. You're just pumping the legs and the arms, and that's it, huh? I literally stare at the numbers. 
I can completely zone out. Like, I I I usually take off like a sweatshirt or like or, or something, and I'll I'll put it on. I actually cover the display because mm. like if if I look and I'm already panting, which happens as soon as I start going, I'm like I have 29 minutes left. Like, what the hell? The hell? So yeah, I cover it up. You got to embrace the suck. I embrace the suck. <laughs> I, I don't I'm want not here to. to be happy. Well, listen, I'm proud of you for going. You can see it. Your traps look great. Been lifting. That's all I do. Straight traps. 75 sets a week of traps. Okay, <laughs> we're not talking about what you talked about weather in your fucking house last episode. And now you're just trying to talk about the gym. I mean, we can talk about the weather if we want. We got our first snow finally in Michigan. Oh, God, let's go. Fucking about time. Let's go on to our top five. So our top five is popular things we have no interest in doing. What's your number five? K-pop. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I mean, essentially it stands for Korean pop, right? And it's, it's, it's not really that new. K-pop's new, but like the, how do I say this? I was sounding like a complete nimrod. Other, other countries other societies cultures whatever always emulate and americans have done it the same right like when the backstreet boys and sync were popular you had the great britain do it right with spice girls and b2k it's not it's not new to try to emulate those type of things but man k-pop to me like i just i just I, I i don't care like if it never existed i think it's i just don't think it's good music and and whatnot but it's it's not made for us, right? It's made for teenagers. And, mm. But yeah, have no interest. Could care less. Never will willfully listen to a second of it. I can't think of a single song or person or anything like that. I know that there's some really famous band that's out there that they're talking about, but I have no idea who it is. My number five is bungee jumping. I have no desire to ever go bungee jumping. And I've been skydiving, but no desire to go bungee jumping whatsoever. Yeah, so my number four actually is skydiving. So kind of along the same lines. I have no desire. I have no desire to do either, to be honest. But I really have no desire to ever go skydiving. I could go skydiving one more time, maybe. But bungee jumping, I'm just like, no interest in that whatsoever. Yeah, None. Have... My number four is going to a football game. I have no desire to go to a football game. It looks like, why would I ever go there when I can just watch this on TV? I don't, I don't understand that at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree. I, I understand what you're saying. I don't agree with that. I think that, you know, it, it, uh, there's a couple factors. If you're a fan of the team, being live and in person uh, or to an actual live event with 80,000 other of people that agree w- with you, and uh, atmosphere is insane. I also think if you're a sports fan, you need to attend a live event, at least one of them, for the sports you care about because live sports are pretty awesome. I can see going to the atmosphere. I've enjoyed that. Like, I've lived in a city where they had a Super Bowl, and I've gone down to, like, the Super Bowl festivities. But as far as, like, going into the and watching the actual game, Mm -hmm. like, why would I go to the game? I could just watch it on TV. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's the same thing for, like, me and wrestling events. Watching it on TV is much better than sitting 500 feet away, but it's, you know, it's it's the ambiance, right? It's the crowd. It's everything else. Uh, my number three, going to like a beer festival. Mm. Solely, for yeah. the pur- solely for the purpose of I don't want to wait in line for beers. And all the beers I, I go there to try are already gone. So I don't, it's just, it's, it's just not it's not good i never want to do it my number three is along those lines it's farmers markets i don't know why people go to farmers markets it's not that good it's overpriced it's just like what's the fun about this i don't understand why like oh let's get this why you could go to the grocery store and get something that's probably better for a third of the price like farmers markets boggle my mind yeah there's definitely there's definitely something about you know the boom of the farmer's market. I mean, they're everywhere now. And you go and it's the same thing. It's crowded. It's the, the same product. It's just, yeah. Yeah, no good. No good. No bueno. Okay. It's your number two. I think this one's going to bother you. 
but I put it on the list not to bother you, but that's how I feel. Uh, I have absolutely no desire to go skiing or to snowboard. I have no desire to do anything like that. Hmm. I can understand it. Like I can understand it a little bit, but I, I, it is I have fun. No, I have no issue with, I'll stand outside and drink a beer or hot chocolate or something while other people do it. But I, I, I just, I don't think I would enjoy doing it. I go ski boarding or ski boarding. I go skiing or snowboarding probably once, maybe twice a year. It's kind of cool to be outside doing it, but I can't honestly say that it like that was really fun. Right. Because there's just too much like I'm not good enough at it that I can really enjoy it. I'm just slightly uncomfortable the whole time. So I can see why you would say that. Well, thank you. My number 2 is celebrities. I have no interest in celebrities' lives. Like, I can understand why they would get interviewed or why people would want to hear them talk about their craft, but why we ask celebrities or care what celebrities think about, like, world economic policy just boggles my mind. Like, why are we asking these people questions about things they have nothing about? They have no connection to our lives. Like, what is the wealthiest, richest, famous people in the world what kind of insight do they have to offer you that can like, oh, yeah, they're nothing like you. I don't know why we talk to them. I know I've said this on here before, but I will never forget when the pandemic started and Justin Timberlake was quoted as saying, man, this 24-7 parenting thing is hard. Th that's why like, I, don't under like, I don't understand why we ask them questions about life. They have no connection to real life. And have no knowledge about things that they get asked about. Like, I don't, I don't get that at all. Like, what does this person think about this? Do they know anything about it? No. Yeah, right. It's, or, yeah, or if, uh, you know, like, if, well, this is the easiest thing to piggyback on, but like the, you know, Israel, Israeli Hamas conflict. Every actor, actress that, you know, was Palestinian or Israeli got the same question. How do you feel? I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't, I don't have any family over there. I've never lived over there. I'm just Israeli, you know, or whatever. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's this kind of ticks a box for me because it's everything, man, from politics to celebrities. It's like, no one's in tune with us, right? Like no one, it's, they're just so far removed because they live that life and that's fine. They deserve it. They're celebrities, whatever. But in terms of their opinions, yeah, they don't. They, they they mean so much to everybody, but not to me. My number one is kind of along those line, uh, lines, but I went more specific, and I said, like, social media influencers. My, like, specifically, a, a kid named Jack Do Doherty. I don't know if you've heard of him. No. But, like, he, he goes around basically trying to start fights with people, but he has these big-ass security guards behind him. That, you know, he's I, I don't know if he's British or whatever. He's just this little guy. Um, and it's just like, like, that's what people want to see. Like, how did he ever get popular? I, I just don't, he's just the first thing that comes off the top of my head, but it's just, it's like that. Like, how is, how is that grounds to make you famous? I just don't get it. I always felt very weird about any of those kind of like influencers or things like that, where it's like a 29 year old who appeals to kids in nine to 12. Like, that's always weird to me. Like, why are you doing this? That's yeah, odd. I always yeah. felt that that was weird. Uh, my number one is coffee. I think it's disgusting. I have no interest in coffee whatsoever. It's gross. It's expensive. Okay. It seems like a thing that once you do it, you're in it for life. So I just have no interest in coffee or wine. Both of those are totally disgusting to me. I've actually, I, I just gave, off co uh, gave up coffee and... Uh, I had some pretty severe headaches, to be honest with you. But I think oh yeah, caffeine's a real thing, man. That's a yeah, that's a, that's that's brutal. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, Why did you give up coffee? Shouldn't you give up oh, other things first? All part of the physical news I received, uh, which I'm gonna oh, tell yeah. I'm gonna tell you one snippet, which will make you laugh. Um, so I got, I got full panels done, and if you've ever had a physical, you know what that means. So I won't tell you, but. Um, the doctor, and she's our age, she's a woman doctor, and we're talking, and she kind of made a joke about how, uh, and I don't know if, if this is right, but how white I was, right? How Caucasian I am. You are she's translucent. Like, 
She's like, do you get out? Do you ever see the sun? I'm like, the sun hasn't been out in two fucking months here. <laughs> so anyways, she does a vitamin D test on me. My levels for vitamin D, like you're, I don't, I, you're supposed to be between like maybe let's say 50 and 100. I was at a four. Oh, God. Yeah, I had like a problem. Yeah, I am in the, ex- like, it, it literally says extreme deficiency category. Like, yeah. So not only, you know, <laughs> not only do I have a bunch of issues, but, like, I'm a translucent vampire who's also an alcoholic, apparently. So <laughs> there's that. Man, you yeah. need to get more D in your life. I need you to get you a sex robot, getting you some D in there. 